Now on Enough Said with KFAN Radio's Dan Barrero. Is life in prison too much of a sentence for that? This I think be, it might be a bit excessive. I don't think so. We're not even going to cover this. This is the most overblown story in history yep. because you're using it for political reasons. So it's already been politicized. Not to mention. Enough Said. Evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. Don't take a chance. Time is running out. There are no excuses not to evacuate. Welcome back to another edition of Enough Said. My name's Dan Barrero. Justin Gard is on my left. And Lori Fisher is back in the control room, rested and ready to go. Hi, Lori. I am ready to go. Hi, guys. All eyes on Florida and the East Coast as Hurricane Matthew hits the U.S. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are preparing for Sunday night's debate. Florida is a state they must win. Some analysts say that they need to be careful not to politicize a natural disaster. Election officials are also nervous about the timing of the hurricane. There's a lot to cover. Dan. Yeah, I think we're, and we're at the one month mark now, right? Yeah. One more month. Think of about this nonsense. it. This Only on one more month. Ever and ever and ever. And well, you know, so the game is how can I appear committed and sensitive and interested but not too much but not going so far that you're doing this for political reasons yeah. it's such an exhausting game we play through this to this nonsense but it's nothing new and in a way though it's already been politicized as i think you may know we've got on one side the notion that this hurricane exists in terms of its size and scope at least what was predicted because of global warming <laughs> and so the other side what's the other the counter we're not even going to cover this. This is the most overblown story in history yep. because you're using it for political reasons. So it's already been politicized. Not to mention extent. some people think President Obama may have had something to do with yes, it. We talked correct. about that on the radio show. Taking out Trump's estate. It is. Mm-hmm. That, that is the, uh, the tricky part that we're in. And we went through this with President Obama speaking to him yeah. in Louisiana, what, a couple of months ago uh, there with the floods. If you don't show up, you're heartless. If you show up... And hand out a couple of things, it's cursory. For some photo ops. It's it's meaningless. And really, in this case, I would say to everybody, just get out of there. Let's let this thing, whatever it is, and, you know, it's it's already gone through some of Florida, and it's already weakened a little, and the, the eye might not even get to where the eye is supposed to go. There's so much we don't know about it. Let's just let it get through, make sure everybody's safe, yeah. and then we can evaluate who's doing what for political reasons, That's right? Not, we're not allowed to do that. I know, because you have, to wait. News cycle. you have to wait a day or two to actually figure it out. Well, let's get to the debate, because the, the, the second one is Sunday. Sunday night, yep. And I, this is, I think, uh, I'm not going on any kind of a limb, but Trump absolutely needs to win this debate. And I don't know that it has to be a knockout, so to speak, if you want to use the boxing parlance, but he needs to win decisively. He's apparently preparing for it this time, and allegedly. I, but does that matter with him? That's, Probably the, the not. The question is, because to me, the Hillary uh, strategy should be the same as the first one. At least test his ability to, quote unquote, stay on whatever he planned to do. We talked last week, there's some material, uh, even Ob- the, the, the Bill Clinton savagery of Obamacare is sitting there for Trump, but is he capable of going down that road? And by the way, if he goes down the devil in the blue dress road uh, road with Monica Good luck. And, and Bill, to me, he's blown it. That's not going to work. I don't think it's going to be a successful strategy at all. Supposedly he's backing away from it, but with him, you can never know. And that's where she's got the pride. Yeah. And if she does successfully, he could end up going way off script. And she, if she wins again, then she's in a very good position. Does he lose the pay-for-play card to play because of the, the tax stuff that just came out this last week? Doesn't help. He basically offset a billion dollars, yes. more or less. And maybe he's never paid federal taxes right. since, I think, 1995. It seems to me that he's lost, that Hillary could come right back at him if he starts doing pay-for-play. And what were you doing? Right. Because it's different when you're a private businessman versus a public servant. But he's been gaming the system forever. Yeah, it seems like he's been gaming the sy- it too. His yeah. system that he's in, he's been gaming it. So I feel like... That, that card might not be able to be played. Probably now Enough said. We have to move on. Here in Minnesota, dramatic uh, surveillance video released by the FBI of the mall attack at Crossroads in St. Cloud. It shows 20-year-old Dahir Adan stabbing people with kitchen knives last month. The FBI says Adan was recently radicalized and that the attack was likely premeditated. Guys? Well, the video's tough to watch. It, I had not seen the video it's until chilling. then. It's yeah. chilling to watch, and it's um, it's especially, and I could see where, the, the, I think the officials talked about this yesterday in the news conference. The confusion. The confusion, that you have a person in some kind of security uniform who then ends up getting shot by a guy in plain clothes, and that he, in fact, had to start bringing out his badge to explain to people uh, who he was. Um, I think what we're, we're getting closer and closer to, even though I know the investigation is continuing, that this is an act of terror. I think 
it was it, it certainly looked like it at the start, but everybody wasn't we worry about jumping to conclusions. But we got further evidence that however you want to term radicalizing, however it happened, something changed in this guy, right. something triggered in him. And sadly, I guess, well, no, maybe happily, the only saving grace to the story, after looking at the, the just some of that grim video, is he had a couple of steak knives that weren't very effective. And that we probably would be talking about a much bigger story and a bigger case if there had been fatalities. If she, if if he had brought stuff that was more lethal than he than he brought with, with all the lone wolves that we've talked about, gosh, for months now on right. the show. That is honestly the the only really good chance you have. As scary as that is to say, is that a lot of these guys are just inept. Yes. Whoever's doing it, and that's really the only thing you can hope. Because if he was, let's say, as shrewd as the Boston bombers, yeah. for example, who clearly know what they knew what they were doing and were clearly trying to inflict as much damage as possible. If he was that smart and that capable, we would have been talking about a huge problem. But he's grabbing a couple of steak knives and you know, running over cyclists on the way there. And he clearly, yeah. not everything saying was there. Saying goodbye at a, at a convenience at the store, gas station. basically saying you're not going to see me Your again. best hope in that scenario is that they're just incapable and they're just incompetent. And, and luckily, I say, even though it was a, a, a tough deal up there, luckily that was the case this time. Uh, and there's no need to tiptoe around this. If he's asking, according to, again, this investigation as it continues, if you're Muslim or not right. as being part of the story, and he's offering up that those kinds of questions, uh, that I would say those are pretty significant clues. Well, however it happened, no matter how stunned people around him seem to be, something happened. This wasn't invented. We now have video that's been released that indicates precisely okay, let's what leave took it there. place. Let's leave it there and go on a lighter note. The Vikings, one of the few undefeated teams in the NFL, they dominated the Giants on Monday night. Houston's up next on Sunday. They are truly the talk of the nation, would you say? They're getting there. Not enough for some Vikings no. fans. Some Vikings fans don't like our current rankings and the power ratings. You know, even though... Everybody says Mike Zimmer's the coach of the year. At least one writer's calling Sam Bradford the most valuable player. Rick Spielman's going to get GM of the year because we're not number one. The Fox one. 9 power rankings, we are number one. I'm the Fox sure. 9? Yeah. I think they are. If they, they have had been. power rankings, they would be Oh, they do. One. Yeah. I think they do. And you can remember, watch the, uh, the pregame show here on Fox 9 on Sunday. Very nice. Lori They'll Fisher's producing. That. It's going to yeah. be the best show that you'll see all weekend. Yeah, just but ask it is, her. It is <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> People are annoyed that we're not getting enough credit. And I thought you nailed it on the radio. First of all, Zimmer doesn't care if they get credit or not. I think Zimmer he prefers if they don't. That's exactly right. Zimmer likes that yeah. maybe they're ranked fifth in the power, in ESPN's power rankings, and he has something to put up on the bulletin board. But I got a lot of heat on Twitter because Monday night it just I didn't think they played great offensively. They missed some opportunities. And it wasn't an exciting game. It wasn't. It wasn't it's, that it's compelling. A, they, they won fairly handily, as it turned and out. And that's but. the sign of a good team for me. That's yeah. what I was trying to get around to on Twitter. 140 enough. characters. People were mad at me. Defensively, they're elite. I think it's safe to say that now. And offensively, they keep coming. Well, along. here's what. And what, what I like is what's what, it, 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 the story's different. I mean, the last two quote-unquote great Vikings teams that, of course, ended with losses in the <laughs> NFC title game, as we all know, yep. were built around what? Offense. Offense. They were explosive teams, and that is more fun for a lot of people to watch because that's the circus. But I kind of like this. This is a kind of a team that, that I think the Honorable Alan Page could appreciate and be, and, be, and be fond of because this is built around a different formula. It is a really good ensemble defense with not necessarily a lot of great stars, and the offense is kind of coming along for the ride, and the hope is it gets better because I think it's going to need to if right. they're going to actually make a championship run. But to me, that makes this a unique story compared to the Favre run and even the Randall Cunningham, Randy Moss, uh, Chris Carter run. And it's fun. I think that can be as compelling for fans because it is different. We haven't seen that around Absolutely. here. Absolutely. And they kind of take on that identity, yeah. right? The fans, first of all, we all know the, the crowd at the Dome. Like NFL fans in general are insane. They're Pretty crazy. Much. They like to be a part of it. And when you have a tough, rugged, aggressive, let's you know, kill the other team yeah. type defense. The crowd, it almost adds another element in the building. You know, you were there on Monday. I'm sure you felt that. I certainly felt it was that. Festive. The Sunday game against the Packers. When you have a, a defense that's just harassing yeah. all these quarterbacks. Great quarterbacks already this year. Three in a row that are at least Super, Super Bowl, Bowl pedigree. pedigree. Although Eli Manning, honest to God, he, <laughs> he did wanted not nothing like to do he with wanted it. to even be in the building. No, it's he did. bizarre. When he... When he's off, he just looks like, let's go on to the next game. Let's shut her down. He didn't want to get hit eight times or maybe more like Cam yeah. Newton did the week before. Okay, let's get to one more fun. thing this segment. Let's stay on the stadium. Because of the noon game, Twin Cities marathon runners won't be able to go in and warm up if it's chilly. Oh, no. And won't be able to use the bathroom. Oh. It, it, it's helpful. <laughs> Um, but you just can't do it because of the security lockdown, Justin. Yeah, it's bad timing. And you know, this, the headline, this is an example of the headline being much more uh, egregious than the actual story. If you want to even go down to like the third paragraph, in a perfect world, they're going to get to use the People's Stadium. 
Years past, they've used the Metrodome, and it sounds like they're going to be able to use the People's Stadium uh, later on as well, yeah. because that's where the, the, start, no the start line here. is. It's and just bad sh- timing. You had the Ryder Cup this weekend that no, moved a couple of things. We're not against, we love marathoners, we love them all. But you know what's no the most beautiful urban them. marathon in the country? Well, I, I, right here in Minneapolis. Well, it's, don't ruin it with this stuff. Yeah, it's silly. And you, and you hit on it, though. The headline, that's where suddenly, instead of being, uh, what's the real name of the stadium? U.S. Bank Stadium. U.S. Bank Stadium. It it's was the suddenly, People's Stadium. In the, all the headlines, it's People's Stadium, yeah. not available, which is what we call trolling, as far as I'm concerned, very effectively. Yes. But Again, would it be, it. is it nice that they would have the opportunity to use it? Yeah. I mean, God bless them. But there's, it wasn't like this was planned. There's security issues here. Uh, you'll d- get With over yourself. With the game. The and by the way, game. I think most of the marathoners get that. They do. I think it's the, 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 the part-timers or the half marathoners that are the real ones. Well, my, my wife, who's run, I think, seven Twin Cities marathons and like 13 overall, I thought she would be up in arms about this. As she someone, well? Like Lori, who has used the People's Stadium to either stay warm or go to the bathroom or whatever. are there places you can use? I mean, can't the, you just go in the bushes? There, you could, yeah. yeah. I mean, because that's usually what runners do on their long so runs when they're running on all these trails they're and very things inventive like that. They are. Stuff, yes. Yeah. They're, they're, they're woodsy and they're rugged. Mm-hmm. She had a good point. Why not just shift it down to Target Center or Target Absolutely. Field? Absolutely. Start coming up on Enough Said. Part of it is we're in a free society. There's certain things we're going to have to accept. And I think we've actually elevated the importance of a stupid fashion outfit by pretending that this is such an issue. It's crazy. It makes zero sense. But that's where you live today. You know, a couple of years ago, if you had said zombies, somebody would have taken that ball and run with it. Today, it's scary clowns. Next year, it'll be something else. Welcome back to Enough Said. That was uh, Farmington's police chief talking about the creepy clown reports sweeping the nation. A lot of law enforcement leaders warning parents and kids to watch out what they put on social media because you could be criminally charged. Dan? Well, the uh, Farmington police chief nailed it. He did. I mean, he, this really isn't about creepy clowns. It, it, it's about whatever is the flavor of the moment. How and can I in, get attention? We're back to in this day and age, it's easy to get easier to get something like this going because of the usual ways we have to tweet out and Facebook out and Insta. Is that what the kids Insta, call it? Insta, Snap, whatever Snapchat. you want. Is, is, that, is that hipper than Insta? Snap, snap. is probably just a, sh- a shade okay. hipper than Insta. I need that help on that. I kind of need help as well. Well, I, you know, and, and this is, I mean, I'm, I'm somebody who grew up worshiping Bozo the Clown. There Me was a too. show out of Chicago. WGN. You saw it. WGN. We all got to Bozo see it. Bozo the Clown. He yeah, was he was everything. He actually was kind of funny and a little bit edgy, but overall, <laughs> he wasn't viewed as a threat. No. And somewhere along the line, I mean, I can't even imagine we're ever going to reach a point again where it's going to be, oh, cute little Bozo the Clown, because now we've got, it's not just this stuff, we've got these images that are appearing of people dressing up in this really evil-looking clown stuff. Correct. We've had, you know, you got, you got Stephen King. Now, even Stephen King has now offered up a press statement about, come on, let's calm down on the clown thing. You heard what happened at Penn State, right? I don't know. A mob of students heard about somebody dressed up as a clown, They then tried to find the clown. I don't know either to celebrate the clown or to beat him up or whatever. Like, we're talking about a mob of students, hundreds of students now running around campus to try to locate said clown. It's gotten very weird. Is it too harsh for the people that are trying to terrorize in clown costumes and just going around and standing in people's windows? Is life in prison too much of a sentence for that? I think it might be a bit excessive. I don't think so. I, mean, I don't know where in my mind, what would have to happen in my life for me to say, I'm going to go dress up, put on a clown mask, which my favorite quote of this whole thing was from an actual clown, because the real clowns that just want to no do, chance. well, they want to do kids' birthday yes, parties and everything, they're, they're under siege now and they're mad, but my favorite quote was, no self-respecting clown would put on a mask. <laughs> that was my favorite quote of this whole thing, which I suppose is, is probably, yeah, probably true. true. I'm, not, I'm not tied into the clown community, but I can't imagine ever in my life Wanting to say, I'm going to go, I'm going to put on a mask, I'm going to go stand in somebody's window. Well, just standing to in somebody's window, there? regardless of what you're doing, that should be illegal. That's called, that's peeping time. I know, but I life think. in prison. That seems a little much for I me. I don't think so. And, and you know as well as I do, a lot of these people who are doing it online, it's, it's become the trolling game for attention. Yeah. And so I'm not sure everybody should be prosecuted time if you put on. a clown outfit mm. on. I, I, I think that's a bit excessive. All right. That's just me. Those clowns. <laughs> Next up. Minneapolis drug counselor petitioning to have Nordstrom's remove a drug-themed clothing line. The dresses, backpacks, and purses from Moschino's capsule collection have colorful pills on them. Opponents say the line glamorizes prescription drug use. Dan. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gobsmacked by this one. I, I'm just so, the key now to winning the, the war on drugs 
The clothing his, line. Is some stupid fashion. The Maraschino cherry, whatever they're called. Whatever I think the Lori said is, Moschino, Moschino, so we're going to go with Maris Moschino. Whatever they are is, is mind-boggling to me. We're talking about fashion. We're talking about surfacy, stupid stuff. And as far as I'm concerned, the, the clothing's dumb. Yes. Uh, I would never, uh, I, the thought of my daughter ever wearing it would frighten me. You might have to worry about it. the idea that this is, I mean, if we want to, we, we really want to go down the glamorizing road, because if we do, we've got a lot more subtle glamorization of all kinds of stuff, booze in, 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 in related, that it, it'll never stop. And part of it is, we're in a free society. There's certain things we're going to have to accept. And I think we've actually elevated the importance of a stupid fashion outfit by pretending that this is such an issue that we have to make them stand down. I, it's a, drug issue is a serious issue. The idea that this is the, the sort of the, 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 the start of that battle, fighting back, is absurd. I'm actually more offended that the purse is $1,000 <laughs> more than anything. <laughs> Maybe Lori could tell me how much a, a good purse yeah. is actually supposed to cost. But that purse with the pills that you're talking about was 1000 I can see why people who work in that industry, and I know there's a lot locally that have had a lot to do with this yeah. in, in terms of petitions and trying to get this line taken down at stores. I can see where if you work in that industry and your whole entire life has been dedicated to helping people with drug problems yeah. and making sure there isn't, I can understand why they're you know, completely frustrated by this whole thing. But it's the people on the, on the fringe that are, are, are outraged by it, where there's a lot more, th more things, there's way more things we can do I think, to effectively combat the drug war than give this clothing line its 15 minutes of fame. Uh, the clothes here's are the, stupid, like you said, and it's ridiculous. Here's the quote. This is from one of their fashion designers uh, ba talking about a previous line. Yeah. Being a fashion designer is a superficial, stupid job. That's about right. That's very self-aware. Yes. And so we need to be, I think, more aware of that's. There's no political statements being uh, made here, I don't think. They don't think of it on those levels. They're just trying to sell. They end up getting, as you say, even more attention. And to pretend, that it, I think it's maybe that this is such a, a war, especially as it pertains to prescription drugs, that people get so frustrated that we're losing it. Yeah. The numbers are scary that they go, well, th we can win this battle. This is an easier but one it's to not win. An, it's not, a, it's not a, an important battle. It's not a significant battle. It's part of living in a, in a, in a free society. It just, just deal with it. Okay, next up. And I wouldn't pay $1,000 for a purse, by the way. Thank Justin. you. What's your limit? 500 uh, I don't even want to say. Maybe okay. a couple hundred if it was really good because you can have it forever. <laughs> Allegedly, that's what Let's I'm told. Get, I know who, someone who can afford a purse, Kim Kardashian. She, well, but yeah. this was unfortunate. She was tied up, rud, ru, robbed at gunpoint in Paris. Her attackers making off with more than $10 million worth of jewelry. One theory, the notorious Pink Panthers or an inside <laughs> job. She says she is, she's quitting social media and everything for at least a month. Justin. It, that's the, well, that's the most interesting thing. We've all had and fun. And least believable. Well, that's, we'll see, because all the insiders, and I actually got into this a little bit, all the insiders are saying she's blaming herself 100% for all of this, that she's always insta or snapping pictures of the rings. Finally occurred to her. Flaunting the lavish lifestyle. After how many years? And how that, many billions? That may have led to people realizing that she might be a good target for this. <laughs> so, obviously, you never want to see anybody tied up at gunpoint. I don't and think so, but she thought she was going to die. She deserved it. I know, and that, that's the, the puzzling thing. And I don't like the ever going down the road of you're asking for it. And I, that's I why I, feel, I do feel bad in this case for all the fun we've made at the Kardashians. Yes. And, and as, as annoying as the just you know, being famous for being famous mm -hmm. trend is the last 10 years, uh, when they, she's obviously, I think, and we'll find out, like you say, we'll find out in a month if she's really learned the lesson, so to speak. But I don't even think she needs to learn the lesson here. Regardless of what you do, how you flaunt it, all of this, uh, nobody, you didn't ask to be tied up at gunpoint no. and think you're going to die in well, a Paris the, hotel. Well, you know, I, I, I talk about something on the radio called SARS, self-absorption reflex syndrome, and you could, I, I would argue she may have invented it. I mean, Very you possible. don't get any more self She's on the board of directors. But who are we mad at? I mean, we want to be mad at her, and a lot of people like to mock and ridicule the Kardashians. There's an appetite for it. But shouldn't we really be mad at the audience? Yes. Because I think that's deep down what bugs us is, She's she tapped. They tapped into something. I don't get it. You probably don't get it. Not really. It's bizarre. The show has never in, any of their shows no. have never interested me. But obviously, there are m millions of people fascinated by coming this up show. on Enough yeah. Said. Yeah, I think on that one we're learning that the uh, the Rusties could not be trusted. What is Aleppo? Let's get right to the lightning round. Is it time to admit that Mitt Romney was right about Russia? If you remember, President Obama mocked him for calling the country our number one 
geopolitical foe. Dan. Yeah, the quote I think was uh, the 80s called, they want their foreign policy back. It was a great Is that line. what he said? And, and, and Democrats were virtually aroused. They loved it so much. And it sounded great at the time. But I think we're learning, and now we're hearing even from leading Democrats on, on Capitol Hill, uh, but based on what's going on in Aleppo, well, not just Aleppo, the Middle East entirely, and a number of other uh, Russian fronts, we gotta, we basically got to recalibrate the whole Cold War thing. We're calling, I think uh, John Kerry is suggesting now that war crimes should be investigated um, uh, as well by the Rus by the Russians, among others. So, yeah, I think on that one, we're learning that the, uh, the Russians could not be trusted. What is Aleppo? Oh, that we, that's a whole nother segment. We said goodbye ago. to the Ryder Cup. Did fans really get out of control when it comes to comments made to European players, Justin? A couple of them did, just like a couple of Go them ahead. at the, them. the Toronto Blue Jays Stadium give them did. Excuses. No, I enable their 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 boorish behavior. Going back to what I said about the clowns, I can't ever imagine wanting to say to Rory McIlroy what some people said at Hazeltine. Now, he even it's said it at the Vikings games every week. And I can't understand that either. No. So it was a very small percentage. 99% of the people had a great time. I already missed the Ryder Cup. I miss going out there. I, I miss Ryder watching Cup. it. Yeah, I, you I, got I the spit, fever. I, 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 and I'm not Next even a golf up. guy. Me neither. No, you're right. Next up, it. super cute. Congratulations to Kyle Rudolph and his wife, Jordan. Take a look at this. They had twin girls this week, Anderson and Finley. Cute names, too. Dan. Uh, it's a cute story, but more importantly to Vikings fans, he's holding on to the ball <laughs> and he's making key catches. He I mean, is. Kids, you know, yeah. you got kids every every no. day. Somebody else is having a kid. Vikings fans care mainly. Let's be honest about he become a good go-to guy for the new quarterback. That's yeah, what they care. He has been, yeah. and hopefully cutest kids ever. Yeah, too. we're no happy doubt about for it. We're happy. Okay, for we need him. to get to two more. Will things, he play Justin? Sunday? I know ahead, you were interested in this story. The Mall of America will be closed on Thanksgiving so that people can be with their families. It's the first time since 2012. They say that you're it's, excited about. Well, they this. say it's so this. people can be here for their families. They're doing it for all the right reasons. The cynics say. Well, even the mall says we want to bring everybody back on Friday. Apparently, Black Friday had lost some of the luster. It did. It, it has because yeah. what was the distinction? You know, people were going out at yeah. one o'clock in the afternoon on Thanksgiving. Right. Kind of takes away the allure of Black Friday. Anytime people can spend, however you get there. Anytime people can spend time with their families on Thanksgiving, Dan, I think it's a great okay, thing. Okay, and here's an really idea, a present idea for Dan. It's called the Mac Candle. You can what? open it up. It's kind of like that new car This smell. is a great gift idea. You open it up. It smells like a brand new computer. You what do you think? you got to be kidding me. I'm a little disappointed I because the, I did get that for you for Christmas, and now it's I blown. Don't even, now, I get the, like the new car smell candle. Yeah. But what is a Mac? A Mac smells You tell like me. You, you're the Mac I'm guy Mac out of the guy. two of us. I, that, this is... This is even too much for me, and I'm a candle and clogs guy, as you know. This is right up your